John 14. You know, as believers, which means followers of Christ, which means we follow the anointing. Hello? Glory. We have to be careful not to be distracted, misled, tripped up, or snared. And one of the things that we have to maintain, which is vitally important, is reality. In other words, there's a difference reality to the world, there's a difference reality to me and you. It's a perception, it's how we see things. You and I have eyes of reality. Amen? If we maintain them. So that reality for me and you should always be the other side, should be more real than this side. Even though there's pain on this side, there's torment on this side, there's all kinds of garbage on this side, but I want you to know it's all garbage on this side. Yeah. It's a garbage side. But the true reality where there's pure righteousness and holiness and love is the kingdom of God. Now there's the kingdom of darkness and evil, which is the other side also. So we know that there's a battle between light and dark, amen, deception and sight, because that's what it represents. You can't see in the dark, but you can see in the light. So there's a battle of maintaining sight and the maintaining of the enemy wanting to bring blindness on me and you. There's physical blindness, there's emotional blindness, and there's spiritual blindness. Eyes with understanding is called sight. Eyes that have no understanding is called blindness. So there may be sight for you in certain things, but blindness for you in other things. And one of the things God wants to do is bring us sight in everything. We call those eyes of reality. John 4, 14 and verse 7. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. Jesus said, if you had known me, you would know my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. Verse 7, John 14, verse 7. What was he trying to do? Bring them eyes of reality. So he was trying to bring them eyes with understanding so they could see spiritually. He was trying to take their eyes off of him and bring them to the understanding of who is in him and who he truly is. See, the enemy has a tendency to keep us looking on the outside, but not looking on the inside. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. Hello. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in him and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. The Father that dwells in me does the works. You know, when I had my visitation from the Lord, everything was bypassed. Not that there wasn't a connection. But the reality to me, to me was Father. Jesus paid the price, but him and the Father are one. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. So to me, in my visitation, everything was Father, Son, Father, Son, Father, Son. That's called relationship. And that's how he wants it with me and you. Father, daughter, father, son. 
but he left us the name that represents all authority in this realm. He left us his presence, power, and truth called the anointing that is activated by his name. But he was still the father. Is everybody okay? He said, verse 11, believe me that I am in the father and that the father is in me or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. In other words, we'll even have more authority. We'll be able to reach more people. Is everybody okay? You got that. Verse what, 13? And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. I'm going to say it again. Whatever you ask in my name, this is what I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, he's saying these in this area, but then he's going to release the reality of connection and how to receive. Verse 15. He said what? If you love me, keep my commandments. Hello. So that is a requirement, isn't it? Keeping his commandments. Now his commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are his character. Does everybody get it? His commandments are his character. He is commanding me and you to live like his character. He said, now I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. So Jesus was looking at himself as a helper. He was the mediator. He was the connector. But he was the connector in the physical realm. Does everybody understand? He was the connector in the physical realm by sight, by the shed blood in the physical realm, to open door to the spirit realm. So that there be a connection spirit to spirit. And he said, now we'll give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. It's what the world is looking for. It's what everyone is looking for. Everyone is seeking the truth whether they know it or not. They're on a mission to look for what the heck is going on. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? What is the truth? Why are things happening this way? How does it happen this way? All kinds of other things. We are looking for, we are a created being that is constantly seeking truth. Because we were created from truth. The character of truth. We are obsessed with truth. Unless deception comes and there's no more desire to seek truth or expand truth. He says he's called the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Now you wonder why you have problems out there? Because the world can't receive the spirit of truth. Now if a person is a believer and still acting like the world, the spirit of truth has departed. So everybody got it? Because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. So he's talking, letting them know that they are seeing not only the Father, but the Spirit of truth. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you but he will come in another form. He will come as the breath of God. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Oh. And now he who keeps my commandments, and he who has my commandments and keeps them, Keeps my orders, 
Keeps my character. Does what I'm asking him to do. It is he who loves me. He who loves me will align themselves with his word, speak his word, live in his word and through his word. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. He will align himself with my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words or align themselves up with his words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. He's always reconnecting them back to the Father. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Holy Spirit, the Helper, whom the Father will send in my name, he will do what? Teach you all things. And bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. Now I want you to know that he can't bring things to remembrance that you have not accepted what he said. He said a lot of things to me and you. But not all things were accepted. Because there's a difference between listening and hearing. Only those things that were heard and put, to, put into practice are those things that he will bring to remembrance so they can be repeated again. Verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. My Father is greater than I. Now that's a reality in itself. Remember, Jesus was the carrier. He was the sacrifice. He was the mediator and the connector. He will always be glorified because of the price that he paid. Amen? But his whole purpose and focus, everything that he ever did in this planet, while he was here, he said, I come to do the will of the Father, not his own. See, so the life that you and I live now are doing the will of the Father, not our own. If we're truly living that life. For the Father is greater than I, he said. Wow. Now, what connects me and you to the Father is the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the price was paid by Jesus' shed blood so you and I can have a relationship with the Father in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of the Father. And now I have told you before it comes, and when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. Who is that ruler? Satan. And he has nothing in me. Oh, doesn't Jesus want that for me and you? But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise and let us go from here. No, I want you to arise and let us go from here. It says, okay, we need to have this so we can move on. We need to get this reality so that we can move on. This is a real. This is foundation. This is a reality that you and I need to have to move on. Jesus lays it all out and paints a picture of reality of who he is, how he connects us through the Holy Spirit to the Father, how he brings understanding to us with true sight of reality. The first thing he's requiring is relationship with the Spirit of the Father. The second thing 
is covenant of keeping his word. Oh, hallelujah. The first thing is relationship with the spirit of the father. The second is covenant of keeping his word. The third is Jesus is not being replaced. He's being revealed. Amen. Amen. He's being revealed by the Holy Spirit. He's not being replaced. He's being revealed. He, why? Because the Holy Spirit is the connector and the carrier of the connector to mankind, to the Father. <coughs> to love, the fourth thing is to love is to follow. If you say you love him, you will follow him. And of course, the fifth thing is to follow is to connect. And the sixth thing, without connection, we don't receive. So we must connect to receive when we ask. So the enemy's always trying to bring a disconnect, isn't he? All of this surrounds itself on the reality of who Christ is. What did Jesus come to preach? The anointing. Everything is about the anointing again. So he wants us to get into a place, the seventh thing, which is complete and perfect, is to be established, perfected, and settled in the anointing. To be established, perfected, and settled in the anointing. This is what brings eyes of reality. Once eyes of reality have maintained, settled, and perfected in the anointing, he knows that you are always looking at what is unseen to make seen. Does everybody get it? So you are always looking at what is unseen to make it seen because that's what brings a reality to you. So if you and I are now living, settled, perfected, established in the anointing, having eyes of reality, now we're able to move on. Until that has been established, God's people cannot move on. They are stuck. That's where the word says they're always, always learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. They get stuck because they're still refusing to make what is unseen to become seen. They're still blaming everything else in the physical realm and not going beyond it. Does everybody understand? Remember, Satan's greatest deception uh, Weapon is deception. That's where he brings everyone to. If he can get a person caught up in that arena, he's got them. We must have eyes of reality, knowing that every emotion, every thought, every desire, every intention is influenced either by the Father through his spirit or the presence of evil, one or the other. If that is not a reality, if it is not checked, if it's not monitor, if it's not monitor, it's not a reality, then God can't give you any more. Everybody okay? First John chapter 4. First John chapter four. Now the word says that the Father comes to bring us life and life abundantly. That means he's always trying to bring us more. 
And the reason why that God can't bring us anymore is because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. No matter what he tries to get us then, it's always being removed. It doesn't last. It doesn't root. In verse 1, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Hello? Man, people will die on how they feel. But I felt this. I feel this way and I feel that way. And <gasps> Shut up. Your feelings are digging your own grave. What does he mean by test of spirits? Test voices. Test emotions. Test your dreams. Test your visions. Test what you see. Test your thoughts. Test your attitude. Test your atmosphere. Test your words. Test your temperature. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Everybody okay? Yes. Beloved. That means believer. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which we have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Now, I want you to know something. He's first speaking that in the area to where it's physical. Every spirit, in other words, every person that's not willing to confess that. But then there's another area where it's every voice. I mean, all know voices love to talk to you. Amen? And they want you to talk back. <laughs> See, they want to get a dialogue with you. Because if they can get a dialogue with you, they know they can deceive you. In fact, they already put the hook in your jaw. As soon as they, that's the same thing that happened to Eve. Amen? It just took one acknowledgement. And the enemy, you know, came by there many times. Yo, Evie. What's shaking? You remember me? He was exalting himself. Look how beautiful I am. Trying to put all kinds of things on her until he finally got her. And he got her first by saying something to him. She tried to defend herself. But then he called God a liar. And she accepted it because she already opened the door to him. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because who? He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who is he? The Spirit of the Father, who is greater than Jesus. That's why he said, you can do more things than me. Because my Father is greater than I. Oh, see, this must become a reality. So then no matter what comes against it, you overcome it. Verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. And who is the love of God manifested toward us in? In Jesus, right? 
that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Again, in this, we got to grab hold of something. Because he says, because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So if you truly have eyes of reality, you, you won the battle before you even entered it. Amen? If you truly have eyes of reality, you won the battle before you even entered it. But see, the enemy plays with us in such a way of doubt, unbelief, fear, and everything else. He loves to attack us from our past because that's all he can attack us on. He knows he's got a log of all of our mistakes. He's the only one that remembers all of that. Jesus has the book of life. <laughs> Amen. There's a book of remembrance. He knows it all, but the enemy knows how to access us if we let him. Amen? Amen. So we want to express God's love in every area of our life. How many of y'all know forgiving is expressing God's love. Amen. Some people don't like it. I've had people cuss me out when I forgave them and blessed them. I forgive you and I bless you. I didn't go any further. I was going to call him a moron and an idiot, but still. I didn't go any further. Why? Because they're in a position where they're no longer of God. They're of themselves. They're under the spirit of error, not the spirit of truth. 1 Corinthians 13. Eyes of reality. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? In verse 1, let's speak it together. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So what is he saying? All works aren't, aren't worth a poop without God's love, which means God's presence, God's character, God's anointing. He said, love suffers long and is kind. This is his love, not worldly love. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely, does not seek its own. It's not provoked, thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will come to an end, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. 
But when I became a man mature in the spirit, I put away these childish attitudes, motives, desires, and intentions, and words. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, <laughs> hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Faith is connection, isn't it? Remember, he says, abide. Faith is to be connected. Hope is future. And love is constant. So faith is actually present. Hope is future. And love is constant. You can't maintain the love of God without the anointing. Worldly love is lust. Godly love is death to self. Godly love is death to self and life in the anointing. Many don't maintain his love because they don't maintain the anointing, the true connection. It's not imaginary. It's a reality. Amen? James chapter 1. Eyes of reality. See, then you can say, I see you. I see you, deception. I see you, liar. I see you, evil. I see you, temptation. <laughs> oh, glory. James chapter 1, verse 21. <laughs> oh, happy days. See, the world hates you because you see them. Why? Because the demonic forces that are in the world that are using people, you see them. Why? You see their fruits. You see what doctors do to people. Amen? You know, it's amazing how many people are on medication and don't break the curse off of it. Breaking the curse off of medication. Everybody should break the curse off their medication. I don't care what it is. The enemy places a curse on everything he can to access. Then people, that's why people become dependent on medication. Because it's actually lust. It's an overwhelming desire for something. There's dependency. Anything that we become more dependent on than God becomes an idol. Is everybody okay? James 1, verse 21. Therefore, what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. In other words, align yourself up with what God says and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Many be, yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, but I don't do it. Well, that's deception. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is an idiot, right? He is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty or the perfect law of life. Anybody remember what that is? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, follow. And continues in it. Hello. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Blessed in what he does. Blessed in what he does. In other words, it will grow fruit. And, amen? It will bear fruit. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows, in their trouble 
and to keep oneself unspotted from the influence of the world or influence of evil. To continue is to maintain connection. He says continue, those who continue. It means to maintain connection. And you are maintaining connection. Why? Why? Because the first thing is there will be a drift from testing. You will begin to drift testing things. When the connection becomes thinner and thinner and thinner, kind of look at it as a connection with wire that's got 12 big wires in it. When the enemy starts connecting these wires and you're down to a thin wire, you ever heard this, I'm hanging by a thread. Hallelujah. Then what begins to happen is the first thing you will begin to do is drift from testing things. This is a sign of a th thin thread or you're being cut loose here. The second thing is drifting from hearing. You begin to not hear God. You begin to drift from submitting. Drift from testing, drift from hearing, drift from submitting. The next thing you know, you're beginning to drift from freedom. You become a little bit more bound more tense. Then you fall into a place, the fifth thing is drift from receiving. You'll come into a place where you don't believe God can do it for you, but others. Drift from receiving. You, you'll come into a place where more doubt will begin to manifest. So you'll be drifting from believing and following. You'll start to follow your emotions instead. And when all these fall into place, the seventh thing will, will happen, you'll be drift from receiving blessings. Amen. So the first thing is you begin to drift from testing. The second thing is you begin to drift from hearing. The third thing is you begin to drift from submitting. Now I want you to know that what begins to happen is an individual becomes lukewarm. Lukewarm. Drift from freedom. You, don't, you, you realize that you didn't have the freedom that you used to have. You know, I was in the world, I was fighting for freedom. But I was fighting for more freedom to do more sin. I mean, you know. Didn't realize I was fighting with God to cut me loose so I can go serve the devil. <laughs> we were rebellious, right? We were actually wanting, I want more freedom. It was the big thing, freedom, Woodstock, freedom. For some of you, you wouldn't get that, but. <laughs> Richie Hayes did a song called freedom. Richie, was it Hayes or Haven? Richie Haven. I chauffeured him one day. <laughs> Him and Ken had the lead guitar player, Jethro Tull. You guys probably wouldn't know about them either. But anyways, he, <laughs> glory to God. Anyways, we begin to drift, and all of this drifting begins to diminish and nullify reality. Remember, the enemy is always trying to access any way he can to begin to nullify and dumb us from reality. That's why, you know, uh, people don't realize the things that are happening right now. I mean, think about when Obama released all those phones. Amen? Here's a free phone. It brought stumbling block to many people. It began to dumb people down. They're legalizing marijuana to dumb people down. Remember, they're trying to dumb people down. They're trying to make them feel better with artificial intelligence. So they produce artificial things. Synthetic marijuana, synthetic this, synthetic that. All of these things that they try to dumb people 
down. Here's pain relief. Let me dumb you down. Does everybody understand? All of these things dumb us down. And the purpose of dumbing us down is so we miss God. So we become complacent, compromising. And we begin to drift. So we become more de dependent on something else than Christ. He is no longer priority. It's been drifted from that. Relationships, money, business, materialism, self becomes more priority. It's called dumb dumb. Dumb dumb. Did you ever see the dumb dumb and gum gum? What's it? In, what's it? Uh, what is it? A night in the museum? Yeah. Hey, dum dum, give me some gum gum. <laughs> <laughs> he likes blowing bubbles, so I can tell you that. <laughs> Philippians chapter two. Oh, happy days! <laughs> is everybody okay? Amen. Eyes of reality. See, you got to ask yourself, am I drifting? Am I drifting at all? Or have I never gotten there yet? Philippians 2, verse 1. Glory. Yes and yes. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, and any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love. Like-minded, having the same love. Like-minded, having the same love. In other words, having the same character. So you want to be like-minded and maintaining the same character. Being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being a form of God did not consider it robbery to be like God or equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself to, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out, work out, I said work out, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. That means you got to fight. It means you got to test. You got to search out. You got to self examine. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the world of, word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. So what we want to do here is maintaining the law of life, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. It is called the law of life and the formula of victory. It is called the law of life and the formula of victory. What is called the law of life and the formula of victory? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight and follow. It's fight and follow. It's fight and follow. Amen? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, 
which is the sword. Fight and follow, because without a fight, you can't follow. Because of evil influence, and let me tell you, when you become in a place where you're lack of testing, you begin to drift. So work out the law of life and the formula of victory, keeping the eyes of reality open. For many, the enemy has shut. I'll say that again. Work out the law of life and the formula of victory, keeping the eyes of reality open. For many have been shut. They've been dumbed down. Colossians 3. Eyes of reality. Colossians 3. <laughs> oh, yes. Verse 1, is everybody there? Colossians 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above and not the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died. Everyone say, I died. And my life is hidden with Christ. So you're now living through Christ, not yourself. When you begin to live through yourself, you've drifted. Blinders are coming on. You're becoming more and more blind. Emotionally, spiritually, and physically. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked when you lived in them. But now you ourselves are to put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Now, it says renewed in the knowledge. Renewed in the knowledge. See, one of the things the enemy wants to do is begin to diminish your knowledge. Amen? He wants to begin to diminish that. He wants to begin to dumb it down. That's why it's so important for you and I to speak confessions because it keeps things alive. It's your responsibility and my responsibility to keep things activated and alive. So you do that by because there's life and death in your tongue. So if you're speaking life, you're keeping it activated. You're also keeping your faith active. It's keeping you connected the more you speak. And the enemy speaks to you, you speak back with the word of God. Amen. Amen. When you sense an emotion coming, that's offense or whatever, you bless and forgive. Lord, I thank you. You're my fulfillment. You're my fulfillment. When things are going your way, I trust you, Lord. Do you understand? You're maintaining connection. You're always keeping everything alive. That's what keeping everything moving. What the enemy wants you to do is become stagnant. It's hard to hit a target that's moving. But a stagnant target is easy to locate. Oh, glory. Verse 8, but now yourselves are to put off these things, right? Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Sounds like love. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. This is God's love. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must forgive them. This is God's love. But above all these things, put on love. Hello. 
which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Now, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to one another. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. Powerful. Now, see, we're to put away our old ways of pride and put on humility. The word says God rejects the proud. What does he mean? Access to the tree of life. When you are rejected, you are set, you are rejected to access the tree of life. Does everybody get it? It says he rejects the proud but gives grace to the humble. So in other words, he rejects the ones that are prideful to the access of the tree of life, but he allows those who are humble to the tree of life, which where is grace, God's plan. Mm. No access to the tree of life brings blindness spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Reality of sight is now diminished. You and I, if we're truly walking in this true reality, eyes of reality, you and I will hate lawlessness. And we will love righteousness. We will hate lawlessness and we will love righteousness. Romans 8. Eyes of reality. Romans 8 and one more scripture. Hallelujah. God willing. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit of the Father also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as, for, as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be understood or uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's why it's important about praying in tongues. And we know all that all things work together for the good to those who what? Love God. If you love him, he says, you obey me. <laughs> to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Spirit helps us maintain eyes of reality, allowing Him control over our thoughts, desires, intentions, hearts, and ways to work all things to the good. One of the things that He's trying to get is control over me and you. Remember, He bought us. 
So if he bought us, he wants to maintain us. Maintain is not an area where you controlling that he wants to have is guidance. Amen? He wants me and you to be guided so that all things are going to work to the good. And again, this is with understanding that we are more than conquerors. And if he is for us, who can be against us? What he wants to do is shut all doors of the flesh in our life. Amen? Shut all doors of the flesh. And let's close with Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 18. Oh, yes. Eyes of reality. Is everybody there? Verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. You know why people get put on the potter's wheel? Yeah, because they've stepped off. No. <laughs> why do God put his people back on the potter's wheel? It says it right here, so you can hear again. So you can what? Hear again. Come here so you can hear. Right? Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel, which is the, associated with the anointing. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. And to another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Let me tell you, he can remold you as many times as he wants. Again, the purpose of returning to potter's wheel is to hear. Because why? There's drift of hearing. There's drift of seeing. There's drifting of understanding. To those who say they believe yet until the eyes of reality are restored, he cannot trust either. Amen? There's got to be a reconnecting to the anointing. There's got to be a place where we become broken again and reconnected again. See, brokenness is the first step of reconnecting. If you're still fighting for your life, your ways, your motives, your attitudes, and all the other things of your life, you ain't broke. You're prideful. And you will be denied access to the tree of life until you become humble again. And let me share something with you. When God begins to deal with our lives and things continue on and we become Christians for so many years, this, and that, whatever, nobody escapes the potter's wheel. You probably go on it about 400 times a year. <laughs> Praise God. That's why we love chasing and then suffering, right? We're to be looking for conviction. But in this, nobody's made it. The moment you think you've made it, you have fallen. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm okay. Oh, no, you're not. None of us is okay. Not until we hear, welcome home. Enter in, my good and faithful servant. Ah, I made it. Now you can say it. But until then, don't say it. Because <laughs> you ain't made it yet. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, O house of true ministries of total freedom, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, look at the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, says the Lord God Almighty. So, he will use us to go back on the potter's wheel so that we can be reconnected. So the purpose again is bringing us humility to break us. What does the word say? He searches out who does God look for? Those who have a broken heart and a contrite or broken spirit and a contrite heart. Amen. Sometimes we need to be broke. Sometimes we don't get broken until we are broke. Oh, God, help me. Eyes of reality, you have them. Maintain them. That's why the enemy hates you.
because you can see things that the world can't see. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this word, this seed that's been imparted in us by revelation and illumination grow and bear fruit for your glory that we may be those who test the spirits, that we may be those who hear, test the hearing. Lord, that we may be those who not touch anything unclean that causes a drift, but that we may be discerning of those things that cause a drift. And Lord, anything that we've associated with that caused drift in our life, we repent for right now. Break its power off. And ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace. Lord, let reconnection, ready, let healing, let deliverance, let freedom, and let brokenness come. That we may trust you all the way home. In Jesus' name. Anybody said amen? amen.